Redfin is reporting pending sales just had their biggest decline since October of 2023. Now, Mike Simonson is claiming that new listings, at least for the past week, have been climbing at a higher rate than last year. At the left end of the chart, you can see that 2025 year taking shape. The dark line shows unsold new listings above last year. This market has fewer immediate sales too, so inventory is building. Do you have less demand and you have more supply coming online? This is creating a lot of stale listings. Now, Ryan Surrent had a very interesting comment about what he believes is going to happen. Um, I, I want to go back to what you had to say about inventory, though, and the fact that we've seen a 10% increase in inventory. I mean, and the, the key question to seeing deals get done, is it actually inventory that buyers want? What's interesting about the amount of inventory that we see out there is that about 50% of the active supply is considered, what you'd say, stale, which means that there's a pricing disconnect between the seller and the buyer. Because a lot of people sold at really high prices in 2020, 2021, the beginning of 2022, and those are your comps, right? Those have been set. But now, 2022 closing prices are three years old. We have a new world now. We have a new administration coming in in two weeks. You've got new interest rates. It's a new normal. And so you're resetting new comps and a lot of that stale inventory where sellers have been sitting out there that have been out of certain buyers' price ranges. I believe you're going to start seeing a lot of reductions as people just decide to get on with their life, sell where the market is, if not at a good premium, and move on. If we can't sell it, is it really worth holding onto the price when we can go and put that money to work somewhere else? I have I have someone we're helping property manage. They're only making about three and a half percent return on a million dollar listing uh, on a million dollar house. Now, do they sell it, drop their price, and, and invest in a five percent treasury? They would get more of a return even if they sold it at a lower price. And I think a lot of stale listings are having this conversation. There are a lot of people looking to sell their homes, and I think they're less opportunistic economically where they see some opportunity to pounce on demand or get higher prices and more just tired of waiting. Sellers that couldn't sell their houses are beginning to think, do we just drop our price and move on? Now, quality houses that are priced well not only continue to move, but the price continues to go up. It's pretty wild to watch, but that doesn't mean that there aren't a lot a lot of of inventory out there that's stale inventory. You heard 50% is price mismatched. If we look at Nashville's active listings, inventory continues this line up. Now, I will tell you, week over week, it has dropped just a little bit, but this is what we expected. The fact that it dropped much less than it dropped last year tells me that we do have a higher amount of new listings coming online and a lower amount of demand, which we do. It's down 10.6%. Now, we are in line with 2023. It is a fast ramp, but it is a ramp that's still 10% lower than where we were a year before. That's in line with what Redfin is saying. That's in line with what Altos is saying. I do feel like Nashville is a bellwether market. Now, if you're wondering if this means price drops. We're going to get to some leading indicators on where price could be headed, at least for the Nashville area. But but first, I want to talk about this Redfin report. I touched on it last week. Home purchases fell through at the highest December rate on record. And you can see we're touching 16.2% of pending homes actually fell through on their contract. And we can see that interest rates, mortgage rates, appear to be one of the most important factors on where demand is. Now, I know a lot of you think if if mortgage rates drop, then it's then it's over. You know, that's an indication that prices are going to drop, and it certainly is if it's recessionary. But there's a lot of reasons to think that if we get a six percent rate with current market conditions, I'm telling you, contract volume and demand would explode right now. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't things in the market to watch for. I'm watching Amazon hire like crazy right now. And I even talked to somebody this week who's moving to Nashville because they got hired by Amazon. That's kind of a positive for the core around Nashville, which has been very soft and continues to be soft. But then we're also seeing pretty large layoffs like this factory in Laverne and Antioch area. Bridgestone announced a 700 person layoff. That's a very big layoff for Nashville, if I'm in Laverne, this would be a cautionary tale. I would look around and go, okay, 
I'm a little bit concerned about what is happening there. NAR just came out with their positive, of course, they're going to always rose-colored glasses, make it look nice and shiny, and they say existing home sales rose 2.2% in December to a seasonally adjusted rate of 424 However, where did we come in? We came in just at 4.06 million houses for the year. This is the lowest level in 30 years. Even though Q4 was year-over-year positive, we just came in lower than 2023. And to be honest with you, we're starting Q1 softer than we are Q4. So the continued low transaction volume, it is just so low. Now, what could make the transaction volume move up? I mentioned interest rates, but price could also. If people drop their price, if what Surhant and Glenn Kelman are saying, it would be interesting to see that. Now, if we look in the data, I know there's a lot of lines. Let me take out the lines just so I can show you what what we're looking at here. So this is the median sales price in Nashville over time, this greater Nashville area. And you can see it jumped up big time in the spring of last year, peaked in Ju- at the end of June, and then tanked very rapidly, almost as rapidly as it popped up. But then in November and December, it popped up again. That's where we came off of. It was really, really weird, but now we're kind of trending down. Now, there's two leading indicators we look at in Nashville to see where price is going. Contracts, which we can push out 30 days. We push out the contracts 30 days. This is the forecast line. You can see how close it is with the green line, and you can see that we're actually kind of stable right now, that we're going to be hovering, because contracts are at 490 to 495, we're going to be hovering in the 480s in January and February. But there is one other indicator, and this one's fascinating. It's the price cuts. Now, before I show you the price cuts indicator against the sales price here, let me just show you this chart right here. This is price cuts. The number of listings with price cuts right now is 1316 in January 25th. Notice that it's moving up. This is very counter to the past two years where it was moving down. Now, by the way, this is just Davidson and Williamson. It's not the whole market, but the whole market mimics this, if not a little bit stronger. And so interestingly enough, we're starting to see price cuts grow. It's a very interesting indicator. Now, if we were to use the forecast in prices and we invert it, it looks like this. You can see again, it mimics the movement of price, although looser, this is also pushed out almost 90 days, 60 to 80 days. So this is two months out. We can see what direction prices are going based on price cuts. It's what helped me forecast the massive drop in prices we saw in the summer. I said, look, it's going to tank, and it did, and then it recovered. And so, and it, and it recovered right as this bottomed and started moving up. Anyways, what are we seeing this year? we're actually starting to see price cuts as a percentage of active listings increase. That's what this drop is right here. It's increasing. This is not. This did not happen last year in January. In January, it took all the way into February before we started price cuts as a percentage of active listings started increasing. <clears throat> and so the fact that we're seeing that now is something to watch. Now, it's going to take a couple more weeks to see, is this a trend? Are price cuts actually going up? But the fact that it started already is certainly something to keep an eye on. Now, again, this is for the median house and the median price. So if you're looking for a $1 to $2 million house and you are wanting something really nice, they're still moving quickly. If they check all the boxes, good location, nice. $1 to $2 million houses are moving quickly. If you're a lower-priced house, much more sensitive to interest rates, it's actually a lot harder to move a house no matter what. If it's missing location or needs updating or anything else. It's just sitting right now. It's the stale inventory. And the question is, is that mismatch in price? Are you willing to give up on price and move the inventory? Are you trying to maximize? It's hard for me to predict whether or not prices would drop in the future. It's just, there's no indication of it. I'm not saying it won't happen. The other thing to think about is prices actually dropped in Nashville when there was a two-week supply of inventory. Now, that's weird, but that's what happened. Prices dropped 10% very rapidly when we had a two-week supply of inventory. When inventory tripled, we actually didn't see price drops. We saw prices churning between 450 and 500, and that's where they've been ever since. 
Now, some neighborhoods have dropped double digits and other neighborhoods have increased and stayed strong. But the fact is, is that broadly speaking, we have not seen any more price changes since 2022. We've been churning between 450 and 500 ever since and slowly moving up from a median perspective. I know you guys are going to argue mix. That's fine. Not every neighborhood's the same. There are some disaster neighborhoods out there. Active listings are ramping, as you can see here. And they are not, even though they dropped a little bit from the previous week, they are clearly not on the same path they were last year. And you can see active listings, Murfreesboro, right in line with where it was in, in 2023. You can see Williamson County. Look at that. Williamson County's growing, now positive in active listings. A lot of demand in Williamson County, so these are getting absorbed. Uh, active listings in Davidson County, up 31%. Davidson County is very, very bad right now. Very bad. And I say bad, it's just a lot more options. But you can even look in, in Davidson County and see tighter places in the market. It's not just all buyer's market, but there are some motivated sellers in Davidson County. Dixon, Murray, look at Murray, 50% above where it was last year. That's just wild. And then we have Sumner up 17%, Wilson up 21%. Let's take a look at contract volume. Again, Murray County down almost 20%, a huge growth in inventory, massive decline in contract volume. This is a major warning sign here. Look at Williamson County. Williamson County running right in line with where it was in 2024. So I see Williamson County under contract volume up 2%. It's It doesn't seem to be phased. It's running the same pace it was last year. And there's a lot, a lot of demand. There's half acre lots, million dollar properties. I'm telling you, there's just so much demand. Uh, under contract, down 7% in Davidson County, 488, but it is starting to close the gap, which is nice to see. Unless mortgage rates go below where they were last year, here's your 38-year fixed rate mortgage. Unless they go below where they were last year, we're going to have continued lower contract volume. And contract volume for Sumner, down 16%. Wilson, flat year over year, pretty wild. If you are planning on buying, there are things you can do to protect yourself. I have a neighborhood tracker to help you see not just the house, not just the comp across the street, but it will help you see what's actually selling in that neighborhood over time, inventory, where prices are, both upper quartile, lower quartile, and you can see a scatter plot of every single transaction. This is a tool not only I use to help my buyers when we craft our offer, but it's a tool that I will allow my buyers to access here, you can see the green is buyer's market. The red is seller's markets. You see there's a lot of green and a lot of red. Buy in the green, sell in the red. That's that. That's kind of the magic formula. Buy in a buyer's market, sell in a seller's market. You'll always end up doing better than average. And look, I'm not saying prices are going to go down or they're going to go up. I do not know where prices are going to go. But what I can tell you is price appreciation for this year does look a bit softer than it did last year. And with that, I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Thanks a lot.